Hello friends, welcome back to the bench. This is 2001 Subaru ECM that misfires on cylinder 1 and 2. And I know what you're thinking, uh, IC608 resoldering job, right? No, this is 2001, which means it's either first or second generation, and that problem is on Gen 3 boards. So this one is a bit different, but as you can see, we have big, huge controller, smaller controller, some other chip over here, um, and we have a whole bunch of transistors over here. All right, and these transistors are C, uh, I had it here somewhere, but I can read it here again, C5293. These are bipolar transistors, and I couldn't find the data sheet for them, but they are available, should, should I need to replace them. On AliExpress, but, I don't know, they're not available on eBay, and they're probably a part of the merchandise that cannot be sold it cannot be sold in the US directly. Some kind of international agreement um, for whatever reason. Now, um, how do we fix an ECM that we have never fixed before? Well, our starting point is to find uh, fuel injectors. Fuel injectors 1 to 6, right? And our number 1 is on terminal one of B137, B137, right this one, this one, we have it connected here. Um, and number two is on terminal uh, B130, no, this is ignition coil, what am I reading? Number two, B136 on six this one so which transistor goes to which injector uh, let's connect this guy over here and this is our number one that is going to the collector of this transistor now we want to find number two, which transistor it is. Um, oh, six. Six from 136. 136 is this one right next to it. And number six is second one from the left. And which one is it now? None of them. <laughs> None of these. That sucks. Let's double check. 136 on the 6th, 136 on the 6th, second one from the right. On this one, yeah. Right, second one from the left, basically, from the right. Um, can't be one of these. Let's just do it this way. Oh, here it is. So it's the second one. So I must have... Yeah, there you go. It's the mask on the board that was not allowing me to make connections. So these two transistors are responsible for one and two. One and two. Okay, so once we know that, um, how are they controlled? They are controlled very simply by a bridge of two transistors. NPN and PNP. guys here oh no no sorry these guys here okay this so injector number one is controlled by these two marked by me um, this one and this one so this is npn and pnp and the gate goes directly to the uh, microcontroller so this is our entire route and that controls it. Uh, we go also through 1K resistor 
on the gate nothing special nothing out of ordinary um, this is our resistor right and that's our transistor so collector is connected directly to the injector and and a meter um, is actually connected to the common ground between all these transistors but not to the rest of the ground of the board so I don't remember exactly which pin but somewhere around here and that is the ground for injectors so that tells us that if there was an issue with the grounding um, in general here then none of the none of the injectors would work and we only have an uh, intermittent issue on injector number one and two um, these little transistors these are they uh, I managed to find the data sheet um, ML33 and M33 and this is the schematic so this is not the transistor this is transistor with built-in two resistors there's a resistor divider or the voltage divider on the base and it connects to a meter uh, collector in our case is connected directly to um, oh no not these uh, the sorry I was thinking of the of our power transistor these are just uh, drive uh, driver transistors they drive that big big transistor right so nothing special here I can find the data sheet for the other transistor but this transistor is something that you would find on a, a power amplifier audio amplifier and the reason is what's you know what is the same about uh, fuel injection system and uh, and the speaker amplification uh, both speaker and fuel injectors are inductive devices um, on the speakers it kind of works differently but um, when you open the injector you basically you push energy into the injector and the injector will store a little bit of that energy and when you turn it off it'll release that energy and uh, not unlike the speaker uh, if you just push pulls to the speaker speaker will store some energy and then uh, release it as it as it uh, comes to rest as a membrane comes to rest um, so that's why these are being used here however as i said no data sheet for this guy because for some reason i don't know all these automotive components they, they never have data sheets but they are available you can buy them <laughs> just you're not allowed to know what's in them but you can definitely buy them okay so what can be the issue so my gut tells me that it's um the solder so the same problem as gen 3 um because the symptoms are pretty much the same and uh, the owner complains that the car will misfire when it's cold um, when it's been sitting in the garage for a while then it misfires then it warms up and it starts firing on all six and it's especially number one and two now is there cracked solder great question um, there isn't but doesn't mean it looks good take a look at this this isn't cracked solder, but this doesn't look good, does it? Look at this, right? So this could be our issue. Uh, it's very likely, just based on my experience with, with these boards, um, I would say that it, this would be the issue. And not all of the transistors are looking like this but majority of them and actually majority of connections so what we're gonna do is remove that old uh, lead free solder from all the joints on the path of injector one and two uh, put new solder on and that should resolve the problem so this is most likely not an issue with the control circuit right probably even if there's a bad soldering over there or the, the solder is crappy 
you don't need much to turn on the transistor but you do need a, a lot of cur current to actually push to the injector so it fully opens if there's um, if the connection is poor the injector is not going to open at all or it's just going to open partially or it's going to open late and that will either way cause a misfire alright let's replace the solder send it back to the customer and see if that resolved the problem if not we will replace these two transistors since these are bipolar transistors it is also absolutely possible that they are partially fault, uh, faulty because transistors especially these because MOSFETs when they blow they just either turn into wire or just completely explode but usually they just turn into wire bipolar transistors I've seen them fail in many different ways some turn into resistors some turn into diodes um, some turn into wire and so we can't say that this transistor is not faulty but based on the symptoms this is um, almost positively a soldering issue or the old solder issue all right let's get it done All right, so this is it. Uh, just to be sure, I also resoldered the pins on the uh, microcontroller and those little transistors that are driving big transistors. And also, since I didn't like the soldering on the, those other transistors, I did them as well. Uh, although there was no complaints regarding the other cylinders, just one and two, but that's yeah, to be on the safe side. Because, you know, what if the one and two no longer misfire, but number three is going to start misfiring, right? <laughs> so, it's better to do them like that. 
alrighty and now we just need to put it back together and we're sending it back to Alan from Kentucky and we'll see if that did the trick if not we're gonna order order transistors and replace them but I really doubt this is this would be the issue with transistors I mean it's still possible sure it is but it's at least based on my experience I wouldn't expect uh, transistors to be faulty usually stuff like that can be measured and and usually when when they break like that they, they just remain broken and soldering on the other hand it's like a plague on the on subaru devices and subaru ecms and the older you know the older the solder gets the the, the property might change and you know these companies are forced to use lead free solder which I don't disagree with obviously it's a heavy metal but as you can see I use leaded solder and I don't even use gloves so yeah that's not good but uh, leaded solder has a little longer shelf life or shelf life maybe not shelf life but as it's being used however this is not an issue on other ECMs on uh, you know uh, like Honda or um, Mitsubishi they don't suffer from this issue they suffer from different issues <laughs> obviously but not not from this one this is just Subaru all right this is what it looks like and it is ready to be shipped back I won't try to ship it today um, UPS second day air so today's Monday, so around Wednesday, Thursday, maybe on Thursday. You should uh, receive it. Let me know as soon as you test it and we'll go from there. Thank you guys very much for watching and I shall see you in the next one.